Hi Morgan, how you doing? Yeah, it's me Daniel here. I'm uh, one of your neighbors. So also son of a cyborg alpha. Uh, you were talking about death. And uh, so I thought I'd do a little video on this. A comment on that. Uh, death is, it is, I think, one of our more our most uh, important things, motivators in our life. Uh, almost everybody in the world, um, whether they admit it or not, are motivated and sort of guided by death. Whether it's their fear of it or the uncertainty of it or... or it, we want our lives to be, in many ways, as comfortable as possible as we can because we see the that survival being clo that close to death on a daily basis is not what we desire, but rather we desire something comfortable. But cultures have always uh, sort of either enhanced death or, or um, made it something to be afraid of. Now, most Western cultures uh, have a concept of mortality that is, well, it's definition, mortal or, or <laughs> mortality, the finality of life. But there is in Eastern culture, a lot of Eastern cultures, where life is not final. Our life here is not final, and there is there is a, a beyond. The question is whether or not you believe in this beyond, and what kind of beyond is this? Beyond, you know, what type of beyond exists? Is it a nice beyond? Is it a bad beyond? Uh, do you come back in another form? These are questions that are sort of uh, foremost in a lot of people's minds. Even when the, when people have obtained all this wealth, uh, if their life has been focused on wealth, at some point in time, they sit back and ask themselves whether or not this wealth is actually worth it. Uh, and it comes back to the point uh, that that you've brought up. Uh, ultimately, uh, the things that we value it, for the average, for, for the most people, is our family. It's our the people we love. And the thing is, what death often does, and I see this because uh, my dad is a priest and I've gone to a lot of funerals, uh, that when you talk to people at these funerals, the biggest thing they've brought up is the regret they have about not talking to this person, not talking to that person, and the sort of the uh, the pettiness that they have about other people, uh, how it prevents them from connecting to other people uh, in an open and honest fashion. In other words, their uh, existence, most of the existence for the average person, uh, exists in a series of facades. In other words, when you go to meet somebody, you're not open and honest with them, but you're more guarded, you're more secretive, and there is an image that you want to portray to a person rather than having the person see who you really are. In other words, uh, we are afraid that if we see, if people see who we really are, that they will reject us, and, and at the end of the day, we will end up alone. That's sort of the, 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 the motivating fear is our loneliness, uh, our loneliness brings up this whole concept of death that, that we will, are isolated and alone in life, isolated and alone in death, and it forces us in many ways to run from this. And as we run from this, we create our facade, our public image that people want, that we want people to see. Now, <laughs> you're more than well aware of the number of geeks on YouTube. And the thing, this, this is where geeks come in. Geeks, no matter how hard they try, that image they try to portray of themselves never comes over successfully. That, one of the, 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 the key character traits, trait, character traits of, of a geek is that our sense of image more often than not fails in the public view than it succeeds. And that's what gives us the, the image of the geek and the nerd and so on and so forth. We just don't know how to manipulate the social situations in such a way that we can create an image for ourselves that may not necessarily be real. So when it ends up happening, our dorky selves, our normal dorky selves, comes through and <laughs> it ends up resulting in uh, the mess that we call the life of a geek. But it's not always that bad because uh, if you uh, sit down and talk to some popular people who must have passed through the uh, filters of life, 
you'll find out that the uh, popular people uh, weren't, nece weren't necessarily all that happy with the choices they've made. And in many cases, they were... Uh, uh, sort of in envy of the geek's ability to be uh, that open and honest. I've always, you know, I said the, the geek, the geek open and honestness is not necessarily by choice. It's something that simply occurs as you exist in, in society, as you exist in the social, as a, a, a social function. Uh, at some point in time, whatever image you're trying to portray collapses, and your geeky nerdiness comes out. And in other words, we're not able to pull that stuff off, and we end up being. Uh, exposed as who we are. Uh, <laughs> and that, that, this is certainly true for myself. But there's a, you know, if, if you're interested in looking this up, look up the Greek term, uh, f look up the Greek term for sleep. If you look for the Greek term for sleep, you'll also find that the, the Greek for, term for sleep is the same word that's used for death. And I think that might be an interesting option to look, to, to look into is to look at sleep as death as a form of sleep. Anyways, that's it for now. I will talk to you and or see you on the web. Alright, and us on YouTube. <laughs> Bye.